Bam! Mr. Taru, in this calculus lesson, you are going to be introduced to the concept of differentiation and integration of a power series. Why are you learning this? Because in an upcoming section, we're going to be actually asked to come up with or create geometric power series that represent another function. So far, we've just been given uh, these power series. And for certain problems, to be able to come up with a geometric series, uh, a geometric power series that represents a given function, we have to use some of this derivative and integration process to make that happen, to make our function possibly with a derivative process, make a given function closer to this a over 1 minus r pattern that we have, you know, because we've been finding the infinite sum of geometric uh, power series since pre-calculus. Um, and then we can create a series off of this formula that we've known for, for quite a while now. But then that series would be representing f prime of x, and we would have to integrate to you know, come up with a series that represents the given function. So this is a skill that's going to come around again. We have a couple of guidelines here that we're going to look at. We are going to say, well, let's just read this off. If the family or if the function given by f of x is equal to the summation where n starts at 0 and goes to infinity of a sub n times x minus c uh, to the n power, you can see how that is, you know, basically our old geometric series from pre-calculus, only we have that any given center there of x minus c, has a radius of convergence of r greater than 0, then on the interval from c minus r to c plus r, that x value of c for which we are creating the series around uh, that we could use this polynomial to estimate the value of f of x. Well, if f is differentiable and therefore continuous, we have these guidelines. f prime of x, the derivative of f, is equal to the summation where n starts at 1 and goes to infinity of n times a sub n times x minus c to the n minus 1 power. And you can see, if you look back up here at our original given series, we're just taking, we have a variable base, we have a fixed power, uh, well, that's going to go to infinity, but we have this power of n, and that's coming down, and we're just reducing the power by 1. We're taking the derivative uh, using the power rule. And this a sub n is just some kind of constant that we have really in front of each term of our polynomial, which effectively does go to, and you know, goes on forever. And we have the derivative of a constant is equal to 0, so we don't need to say we have a plus 0. Uh, if we bring this 1 down, 1 times a sub 1 is equal to, well, a sub 1, but then your x minus c will be raised to the 0 power, which is going to be 1. So that's why we just have an a sub 1 here. And then 2 times a sub 2, now your x minus c has a power of 1 because it's been reduced down by 1 from 2. And then 3 times a sub 3, and that uh, x minus c having a power of 3 has been reduced by 2, and so on and so on for, well, ever. Now you look here, and you see that our lower index is n equals 0, and now it's equal to n equals 1. So you might think by the rules here that we have, the guidelines, and maybe possibly the example that's in your textbook, that this lower index just automatically increases by 1. Well, the example that we're going to work with uh, is not exactly in this format of just a single simple constant times x minus c to the n. So you do need to see that it's very helpful and you really need to uh, be looking at that expanded series and seeing how it behaves so you can uh, determine, well first of all, does the expression you come up with uh, through the derivative or integration process, you know, is it accurate? But also, you know, does that lower index really always change? So make sure you pay attention to the expanded form of that series. And then we have the integral of f of x dx is equal to c, because of course when you do an indefinite integral, uh, you always have that plus c. Uh, so c plus the summation where n starts at 0 and goes to infinity of a sub n. And you can see here all we're doing is making the power go up by 1 and then dividing by that increased power. And then we have the expansion here. So <clears throat> The plus c, of course, because when you take the derivative of a constant, it comes out to be 0, so there's a plus c. Uh, the integral of a sub o, well, you're integrating kind of, uh, well, you're integrating with respect to x, but you've got this x minus c here. So we have that a sub o times x minus c, and then we have a sub 1, and that x minus c factor, uh, it's, well, really variable here, 
uh, with that power increasing by one and then dividing and so on and so on. The radius of convergence of the series obtained by differentiating or integrating a power series is the same as that of the original series. Now notice it says the radius of convergence, not the interval of convergence. So you have the same center, of course, the same radius of uh, convergence, but we will need to, and that's where I said that uh, at the end of this video, I'm just going to show you all the work that's involved in testing the endpoints of our original series, the derivative, second derivative, and uh, series we get from inter uh, integration. The interval of convergence, however, may differ as a result of the behavior of the endpoints. And as I'm preparing these lessons for you guys, uh, relearning stuff that I you know, long learned and forgotten from my math degree and prepare to teach uh, my classes next year at my high school, I need to make sure that the work I'm doing, you know, is correct so I present it correctly to you and my students. And the solutions guide, you know, has become very, very abbreviated. So I want to make sure you see all of my work it takes to find or test those endpoints and uh, know that, yeah, sometimes it takes a whole page, work, uh, page worth of work to, you know, do what the solutions manual looks like is just a couple of steps like, you know, oh, it says nothing. No, it could actually be quite a lot. So let's get on to our example right now. So we're going to find the interval of convergence of our original series f of x, then f prime of x, f double prime of x, and again, the integral of f of x dx, and include a check for convergence at the endpoints of the interval, just as a reminder. Okay, so when you follow those guidelines, you looks like, and you kind of can, just straight up use the power rule. Now, as you look at this rather complicated one, maybe, uh, series. It's not the easiest one that was in the textbook that I teach from, or inspired by the easiest one. It can be overwhelming here with all of this negative 1 to the n plus 1, n times uh, 5 to the nth uh, power, and you can see here we have x minus 5. Finally we have a variable. Now remember, as you expand the series, we're going to let n equal 1, n equal 2, n equal 3, and we're going to get a a series that, or a polynomial, that does not have the variable of n in it. The variable that's going to be left is x, and you can see that we have this x minus 5. So really right here, we can already see that the center uh, of this power series is going to be 5. We just need to, um, later on as we set up that ratio test, uh, look for the radius of convergence. And this negative 1 to the n plus 1 and this n times 5 to the n power, well, as you let n equal 1, n equal 2, n equal 3, so on and so on and so on, did I have an actual z? Yeah, that is 1 to begin with, not 0 for a lower index. These are just going to be constants. Really, as you take the derivative, it's this power that's on the x minus 5 that is going to come down and be reduced by 1. So, f prime of x recognizing that, again, all the stuff here with the ends, all of this, that's all just a constant for, on each of the terms, uh, we have that f prime of x is equal to the summation where, now I'm going to leave this, this lower index blank. That's where I said you need to focus on, really, you want to look at the derivative of our series term by term. Right now I'm just looking at the, the summation notation. We're still going to have this um, obviously a upper limit of infinity. We're going to bring this power of n down. So again, we have this constant. This negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n times 5 to the n power. Now it's going to be times, we're going to bring that power of n down, n times x minus 5 to the n minus 1 power. And our factor of n in the numerator and our factor of n in the denominator are going to cancel. And that should be a proper uh, derivative uh, here. The derivative of this series should be this, but of course we've left that lower index uh, blank. Because this is not exactly in that um, a sub n times x minus c to the n power 
uh, format as you saw in those guidelines that we had at the beginning of the video. So let's, let's look at what's going on here. As we let n equal 1, we're going to have negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, or negative 1 squared is positive 1. We're going to have x minus 5 to the first power over, now 1 times 5 to the first is 5, and then we have where n equals 2. Well, it's going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. Negative 1 to an odd power is going to be uh, negative number to an odd power is going to be negative. So just put a minus there. x minus 5 to the second power. And then we have 2, because n is equal to 2 now for the second term, times 5 squared. Well, 2 times 5 squared is 50. And now we're going to let n equal 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. That's an even, so a plus. The negative 1 to an even power is going to be positive. We have n, x minus 5 to the third. And we have 3 times 5 cubed. And I'm just going to leave it like that. I think it's what, 625? Now as we take a derivative here, now I'm not going to create terms with what I believe is the, you know, series which is a derivative of that series. I'm actually going to take the derivatives from our expanded uh, form here. We got the 1 coming down. So 1, we're going to have x minus 5 to the 0 power, which of course is going to be 1. So our first term here is 1 fifth. Now minus, again taking the derivative term by term, 2 comes down, so 2 times 1 is 2, divided by 50 is going to be 1 over 25, and we're going to have an x minus 5 to now the first power. And bringing down, oh, yeah, it goes on forever. Um, and really the next term is going to be negative, but it is sort of an addition forever. Um, bring the 3 down. The 3 divided by 3 cancels out, so we're going to have x minus 5 squared over 5 cubed, and then minus, and then plus, and then so on and so on. So would it make sense to like that, that rule that we looked at for the derivative? It was like, well, n equals 0, and then n equals uh, 1, or you just increase that by 1. So is that lower? index going to be 2? Mm, 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 to the third power is going to be negative, but our first term is positive. We've got x minus 5 to the 2 minus 1. Well, that would still leave us a factor of x minus 5 in the first term, and our denominator would be 5 squared, which is 25. It actually seems like if I let n equal 2, I'm not going to get the first term of my series. I'm going to get the, the second term. See, the derivative here, uh, the derivative of our first term did not become 0. There's still a 1 fifth there. So our lower uh, limit on our, or our lower value of our index here, or n equals uh, the lower limit of our summation uh, notation is still going to need to be n equals 1. We're not going to increase that by 1 like we saw in those rules that I, I just read off to you in the previous screen. So that's going to be our first derivative, is a cleaned up version of this. So let's see. Okay, and I'm just going to check my notes, make sure I didn't copy something or do something silly as I was trying to talk at the same time. Okay. Now let's take that derivative again. Let's find that second derivative. So f double prime of x, if we use those guidelines, those rules that we just uh, went over, we can say that we have got, I'm going to leave this first line blank so I can actually take the derivative of our series term by term to make sure that everything is matching up right. Again, this is a constant, this negative 1 to the n plus 1, this 5 to the n is a constant. We have that variable x that we see that really is the variable that's left in our polynomial raised to a power. So we're going to bring that n minus 1 down and decrease it by 1. So our derivative, if this is f prime of x, then f double prime is going to be 
the summation where n starts at something going to infinity. We have our negative 1 to the n plus 1 power, bringing this n minus 1 down. Reducing that power that's on the x minus 5, our variable base, by 1. So we have n minus 2 over 5 to the n power. Okay, so when we look at the expanded form of our series, and if we were to think about taking the derivative of each of these terms one by one, we'd be taking our first term now is 1 fifth, and the derivative of 1 fifth, well, that's equal to zero. So really, our, see, our first term is kind of going away because you don't need to write a plus zero. Now we have negative one or positive one to the negative one twenty-fifth, which is going to be negative one over 25, but now our x minus 5 is going to be raised to a 0 power, so we're not going to write that x minus 5 factor. Bring this 2 down, and we have 2 over 5 cubed is 125, no canceling there. Our x minus 5 is going to have now a power of uh, 2, or excuse me, power of 1 because we're going to reduce it, and then our next term is minus, and then add and subtract and add and subtract. We have an alternating uh, series here with that negative 1 to the uh, n plus 1 power. See, if you still leave n equals 1, do we need to? And let's just double check it. We have negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, if we were to leave it as 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 1, negative 1 squared is positive. We have 1 minus 1, which is 0. Okay, so this would come out to be 0 when n equals 1, but why why have a, a term that is zero? So let's just allow that to increase, not decrease, increase by one and say, well, really, our first usable term now is negative one over 25. We drop that first term in our polynomial because the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. So let's increase that lower limit of our summation uh, notation from n equals one to n equals two. And just, just double check it. Plug two in. Negative 1 to the third power is negative. Good there. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, that looks good, so that's just going to be 1. We have x minus 5 to the 2 minus 2 power, so that's going to be x minus 5 to the 0 power. Good. Yeah, our, our term here does not have, um, our first term that's not equal to 0, does not have an x minus 5 factor to it. In the denominator, we have 5 squared. And of course, you can let n equal 3 and double check it, and that'll come out. And this is the series. This is the correct answer. And you can see that, yes, as we take the derivative, as we go through this polynomial, eventually our first term is going to become a constant, and the derivative of that constant becomes zero, and that's when the lower limit of our summation notation starts to step up by one as we take derivatives. But it's not going to happen every single time. Now, <clears throat> the integral of f of x dx is going to be the integral of this summation notation. And uh, you'd be integrating with respect to x because all these n's are constant. So we're going to have the summation where n starts at 1. I'll explain that in a second why that doesn't change. We go to infinity. We're going to now not decrease our power, but of course when you integrate, you're going to, well, just a power rule, you increase that power by 1. So we have negative 1 to the n plus 1 power. We're going to raise this up by 1. I don't know, I'm leaving a lot of space there. x minus 5 to the n plus 1 power. And of course, integrating with the power rule, once you increase that power by 1, you have to divide. So in the denominator, we have n times n plus 1 times 5 to the n power. Now why? Well, I just got to check because, you know, I'm me. Ooh, see? That's why I have to check. <laughs> I just did an indefinite integration and forgot my plus c. Oh, Lord. Don't forget the constant of integration. Of integration. Now, why did I not need to worry about checking that uh, lower limit? Because, you know, the integral here, if we have our first term of x minus 5 to the first power 
divided by 5, you know, when you take that power and you increase it, and it, you would have uh, x minus 5 to the second power, then you divide by 2, that first term's not going away. It's not going to go away like what will eventually start to happen as you repeatedly take the derivative of your polynomial. At some point, you're going to start having terms, you know, fall out because they're becoming zero. That's not going to happen as you do integration. Now, of course, it's not a bad idea. Uh, you can certainly integrate each of these terms individually and then make sure that your, uh, what you believe to be the correct answer for the integration on your series is actually checking out. Now what we need to do is find the center, which we already know is 5, because that x minus c pattern, and the radius of convergence kind of set up an, uh, a preliminary uh, interval of convergence. Jump down! So, but then we're going to have to check all the endpoints for f of x, f prime of x, f double prime of x, and the integral of f of x dx. But let me make sure the time's good on my camera. Good thing I checked on that time. It uh, was about to time out. So we saw in the notes there that if you find the, radi the center and the radius of conversion for the original series, it's going to be the same except possibly a difference in behavior at the endpoints. Uh, you find the interval of convergence for the original series, you have the, okay, the center and radius of convergence for the original series. You'll have the same for all other series that you create or find off of uh, with your derivative and integration process. We're going to do the, uh, the ratio test on our original function to find that center, well we know the center, it's 5, and that radius of conversion. So we're going to do with the ratio test. the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, but my space is limited, so I'm going to go ahead and flip that, uh, that division of a sub n up and multiply by the reciprocal right off the bat. So we have a sub n plus 1, so negative 1, n plus 1 plus 1 is n plus 2, times x minus 5, n plus 1, denominator, n plus 1 times 5 to the n plus 1. Now a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n or multiplied by the reciprocal of a sub n. What do we got here? We have 5 to the n power. We have 5 to the n power plus one more 5. We have x minus 5 to the n power. We have x minus 5 to the n power plus another 1. So we have a factor of x plus 5 in the numerator. We have one more negative 1 in the numerator than in the denominator between n plus 1 and n plus 2. And we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of negative 1 times n over n plus 1 times, eh, we'll just leave that factor of x minus 5 in the numerator, make sure it's totally clear. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The limit, as n goes, the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1 is going to come out to be 1. And I forgot something. Yes, I almost forgot my extra factor of 5 in the denominator. So let's put that down here. So, uh, woof! I didn't have to check my notes to catch that mistake. I'm doing good. So the absolute value of negative one-fifth is positive one-fifth. The limit, again, is n over n plus 1 goes to 1, so whatever. And we have the absolute value of x minus 5. That, you know, of course, with the ratio test, that is going to be convergent if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n is less than 1. Multiply both sides by 5. We have the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than now 5. So we have a center, as we identified very early on, of 5 and a radius of convergence of 5, giving us a preliminary interval for x between 0 and 10. Now that's really the end of my introduction and lesson about how to find derivatives and integrals of power series. Now what I'm going to do is step off and 
maybe you don't need to show as much work as I do, but this whole page is showing all of the work for testing the endpoints um, of 0 and 10 for each of the four series. Uh, that's it. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go do your homework.